immediately. Right when I sit down, he brings me a toy. We can't play, oh, hi. Yeah, that was on me, that's not on you, good boy. We've been playing all morning. Just uh, give me 25 minutes, I promise. Won't make it that long. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody? Hope you're doing well. I'm great, I have a plant that I need to repot. This one right here, that's the inspiration for this video. Did I just say video? With a B? Video. That's not right. Off to a great start. This is a Dracaena Aspen White or White Aspen. I can't remember the name. I don't really care that much about the name. All I can tell you is that I think that it's absolutely beautiful. I love the variegation on this plant, but this plant isn't really the focus of the video. But if you wanted to know about it, there it is. It browns very easily outdoors. Inside, didn't really have much browning. Brought it outside for a couple of weeks and just, yeah. Hasn't been all that happy. This needs to be repotted. I've had this for several months. Haven't gotten a lot of growth at it, which is odd for a Dracaena of this type. The majority of the Dracaenas that we will find at big box stores, this is from Costa Farms, tend to be more vigorous. They need to be more vigorous for it to make sense to produce the plant. And I know why this hasn't been growing much, and that's why we're here. This is still in its nursery container. That brings up the question I get asked all the time. When do you repot the plant? Do you leave it in the nursery container? So I figure while I repot this plant, we can talk about that. See, this is getting a very large upgrade. Well, it's actually not that big of an upgrade. It's probably about perfect. It'll be getting about an additional inch on each direction of that root ball. That's, that's what we want, about an inch to two inches. But the main thing about this upgrade is what it's going to be going through. This will be moving from coconut into a potty mix that has some organics in it. Coconut, coconut core, cocoa core, is actually the pith of the coconut. It's ground up. There's a whole process. They get soaked and some time has to pass and then it gets ground up into cocoa pith, which is then sold as coconut core. Sometimes that'll have salt in it. So you need to check where you're getting that from because sometimes they're soaked in salt water. I'm not a hater when it comes to coconut. However, coconut does have, I'm talking about the core, the pith here, it's specific applications where it's fantastic. There are pros and cons as with anything. Pros being that in a lot of senses, it's more environmentally friendly. That's one of those things where there are a lot of different directions you can take that. But we know that peat is not very much a renewable resource because of how long it actually takes the moss to break down into peat and then the damage to the environment. But then you have the flip side of the industrial side of producing the coconut and gas emissions. So a lot of this is going to depend on your proximity to these places and there's there's a lot that goes into that. That's not what I want to talk about. To me, the conversation of should you repot the plant comes down to how you're growing the plant and uh, how you would like to move forward with the plant. It's not uncommon for people to buy a Monstera Deliciosa from a big box store and they say, well, I rescued this Monstera. It was in coconut, it was just going to die. As if these million dollar companies that are mass producing these plants are sticking them in a substrate that's going to kill the plant. I understand where everybody's coming from with that. The thing is, What's working for them, not always the most practical use at home. So it is correct for the most part with something like a Deliciosa that's gonna be very prone to rot. Go ahead and get it out of that coconut and get it into a mix that's more airy. The cocoa core has a lot of moisture holding potential. It's also something where when it dries out, it can take a while to rehydrate it. So you need to maintain a balance with it. There are some plants that are going to do really well in it, like some forms of Dracaena that are really happy being more on the moist side at all times and spathophyllums, potentially just fine for them. But when it comes to the nutrients that are stored within these, there are some that tend to be missing. So calcium, magnesium, and iron, the three of those tend to get bound up in coconut. That's a whole science thing that has to do with cations, not the person to talk about that. And then there are factors that go into a, at what level that's happening, that can have a lot to do with the pH of your water. That's true with all nutrients. Minerals, how they're being taken up by the plant, a lot of that has to do with the pH of the soil, which can be influenced by the pH of the water. It can be heavily influenced by the pH of the water. Coconut holds a lot of water. For me, I live someplace where the pH of my tap water fluctuates from like 7.6 to 8.2, 8.4. It really goes all over the place, but it is way above neutral. Neutral being seven. For ultimate <laughs> nutrient absorption, that was just, what a corny way to put that. For ultimate nutrient absorption. Most growers who are doing things hydroponically, which is what you're getting with coconut or peat, if it's just coconut and it's just peat, if that's your potty mix, you're technically growing things hydroponically, meaning that 
all of the minerals that the plant are going to need to grow are dependent on the, us, the growers. Because there's really not much going on down in here other than moisture holding capacity and a decent biome for mycorrhiza development. But that means that things need to be fed in order for that to happen, for the mycorrhiza activity to get going. The reason I mention all of that is because uh, even in a peaty soil, it's still a, I don't want to say sterile environment, but it's not an environment that's full of lots of organic material. So there's still going to be a lack of minerals available for the plant. The difference being that coconut is more in the neutral area, whereas peat is more on the acidic side. And the more acidic things tend to be, the more nutrients can be unlocked for the plants. Not all plants, but that's the situation for the majority of houseplants that are being grown. When you look in here, you can see if the camera, there we go, camera focus, look at that, doing its job for a change. Lots of slow release, that's typical. Can't attribute that to it just being because this is in coconut, but it is very important. Unless you wanna be adding fertilizer to your water every single time you water the plant because there's not a lot going on with this coconut. I have read some uh, studies I would loosely call them studies, but some journals talking about the nutrient holding capacity of coconut being very good. But again, the availability of that to the plant is going to be dependent on pH to an extent, mostly with calcium, magnesium, and iron. With coconut, iron seems to be uh, the most difficult one. That's what gets locked up the most. And I have noticed with plants that I have potted up and mostly coconut, I'm having to supplement with iron. So I have been moving to a more 50-50 blend coconut in peat with a lot of my potting mixes over the last several months when I've been doing repots to some just being straight up peat, just depending on what's available at the garden center when I go to get something to use to make a soil blend. And that has been helping a lot. So when I have a plant like this, I bring home a Dracaena, a plant where I know that this could easily put at least a foot of growth on every single year. And it's only put out a few leaves within a like, three or four months period, I know that this is not a plant for me to keep in coconut because when I have this in the house, I'm not putting little squirts of fertilizer into the water for this every single time I water it. Not in the place that it's at. That's also, that's just a me thing. If it were in my kitchen, then I probably would be because I keep my little nutrient squirt bottle under the sink, but this is in my office and that's just not how I roll up there. This needs to go into a potting mix that has more life to it and that can be a uh, two-fold situation when it comes to house plants. There are drawbacks to using a potting mix that's more organically rich. By more organically rich, I mean I took a standard potting mix, which is not at all organically rich. It's peat and perlite for the most part. And I've added some earthworm castings and uh, a, I'd say a small handful of cotton burr compost, a very small handful, to liven the soil up, get some beneficials in there that are going to help produce nice roots and help with breaking things down so that the plant can take things up. Main downside to that can be compaction. Organics break things down, so uh, you're going to have a short amount of time until this starts to become more muddy, which isn't great. You want oxygen down there around the roots of the plant. That's very important for growing nice and healthy plants, right? I try and counter that with making sure there's a good amount of perlite or pumice. I prefer pumice, but it's not as easy to come by these days. Bark chip, just lots of various size things. Regardless, this will need to be checked on to make sure that it's draining properly more carefully than I probably would if I were to just leave this in coconut, which is not going to break down within the next couple of years. I typically like to repot a house plant every couple of years as it is. There are some exceptions, ponytail palms, some sansevierias, plants that you just kind of can set them and forget it. I don't always stick to the every two year thing. Generally, I gauge things by, has the plant stopped growing? <laughs> And usually it's about two years when I need to move it into something fresh and larger so that they can, there's a more moisture capacity in the soil for the plant to use. So for me, with everything that I just had to mention about the coconut and knowing my own growing habits, the best thing for me to do is to get this into that mix that has some organics in it that will hold on to those minerals that I give to the plant. I'm gonna go ahead and clean that stuff off from down below. These cuttings were planted much more deeply than they needed to be, so I'm gonna clean those off and I will let them stick up above the soil. Now that I've cleaned that soil out, you can see there's about this much soil in there that really did not have much in as far as roots go. There are some teeny tiny fine feeder roots, which are, well, that's what we wanna see. You don't have to get all of the coconut out. That's not the point here. The main point is just to have a nice homogenous environment. So the soil in this root mass right here isn't that different from the soil that the plant's being moved into. That way there's even moisture when the plant gets watered. So let's say you bought a Monstera Deliciosa and it's in that 
coconut mix, which it probably is if you got it from a big box store, either a coconut or peat blend, and you're immediately thinking, I have to repot this right away, it's just going to rot and die. If you live in a really cool and humid environment, then I would agree with that. But really that goes back to how are you taking care of the plant? If it's in a very moisture retentive soil, then you just, just don't water it as often. It's not always that simple, and that's why it's usually advised to just go ahead and repot the plant. It's because how long would it take to try and explain all of the various ways that you can grow plants based on different environments and different potting mixes? It makes more sense to say, hey, this plant wants oxygen around the roots, and this is a mix that allows plenty of oxygen, but also holds on to a lot of moisture. And the plant at room temperature in a house may not like that. As you see at these great big production facilities, oftentimes these plants are going to be grown a few different ways. When they're smaller, like this one was, it's probably on a flood table, more than likely. It's just a really long table with all the plants potted up on it. Water comes in, literally, just what it sounds like, flows through the table, and then there's a pipe on the end where that drains back down. Those can be done in recirculating systems. Sometimes they just come on a few different types of days. There are lots of different ways to do that. The thing that sets that apart from how we grow things at home is that every single time the plant gets water, more than likely those growers are putting fertilizer into that water. And the coconut, like I said, it holds on to fertilizer really, really well, but there are a few important things like the calcium, magnesium, and iron that can get locked up depending on the pH of your water. So that brings it back to practicality. Do you want to be checking and balancing your pH in your water every time you add fertilizer to it and do that every single time you water your plants? Probably not. Most people don't. I do that with some things during the winter time in my grow space where I have a huge batch of water. It's a 700 gallon above ground pool pond thing that I can use to do that with. That makes it much easier, but I'm not gonna do that with every two or three gallon watering can. Not saying that you shouldn't, if you do that, good on you. But I think a lot of people don't necessarily have that sort of dedication. The amount of soil that I've taken out of here is not necessarily typical of what I would do for a plant, but it's a Dracaena. You know that Dracaenas are very sturdy plants as long as that soil, soil, as long as the soil stays appropriately moist, meaning basically moist at all times, can only dry out just a little bit then that's going to reroute into that potting mix, no problem. Now that I've seen the root mass on there, I could have definitely gone to a smaller size pot. I will keep this outside for the next few weeks because it's nice and warm and humid out here this time of year. And that's going to get this thing rooted into this much, much, much more quickly. If I were doing this indoors, then I would probably have gone with a smaller container after seeing what little amount of roots were left on there once I pulled the coconut out. But again, should not be an issue. This is outdoors, plenty of humidity right now, and it's in a mix that holds on to some moisture and is organically rich. Those roots are going to be much more likely to start doing their thing much more quickly than the coconut would be, unless I were to constantly add stuff to the coconut to encourage it to do that, which I, I don't I don't have time. I'm not going to do that. Just being honest here, if it works for you and uh, for your growing environment, stick with it. It's a great product. There are a lot of advantages to using it, but there are also a lot of circumstances where I would say get the plant out of that mix, <laughs> right, and into something that's more rich for the plant. Not a lot of mechanisms at Place for Home Gardeners to make sure that every single time the plant's getting watered, from a tap or from a hose and sprayer that it's getting fertilized. It's not, it's not always practical to do things that way. But there are some injector systems. If that's your thing, you can give it a try. Unless you're producing plants commercially, I'd just repot the plant into a standard all-purpose potting mix, add some earthworm castings into there, perhaps some continuous release, uh, water it with a nice kelp or seaweed extract, get some richness down in there. A little bit of compost goes a long way. There it is, there's my long discussion of should you or should you not repot your plant white when you bring it home. Didn't give a solid answer, and I'm not going to. So that really does depend on what plant you have and how you're growing your plants. If you're unsure, I would say do a lot of research on the plant that you're growing, see what they like, and keep in mind everything I just told you about the coconut. Main thing there just being that it has a very high moisture holding capacity and it will usually hold onto moisture for a pretty long time. So there are gonna be a lot of plants where that's probably not appropriate indoors, largely because of not having a system to constantly feed this mix and also because household temperatures means slower growth that's the other thing 
Things that are being grown commercially are in greenhouses. It tends to be fairly warm in there, generally over 70 degrees. 75 to 84 is usually a sweet spot for getting plants to grow. When plants are in that sweet spot, they're pulling moisture a lot faster. They're trying to grow. In most homes where it's not that warm, some people keep their house that warm. Different scenario if that's your situation, but average household temperatures just from Googling it, it's like 68 to 72 Fahrenheit, somewhere in there. That's not a range that gets plants moving all that quickly, meaning that that water is going to sit in there longer because the plants aren't using it. Again, there are some plants where there's nothing wrong with that. Then there are other plants where it'll just kill them. And yeah, okay, because of some cation chemistry stuff that I can't break down for you. These tend to hold on to calcium, magnesium, and iron. They don't re-release it all that well. There are things you can do to change that. But most continuous releases, slow release fertilizers, usually have decent levels of calcium, magnesium, and iron in there that can keep your plants happy too. My point there being it's not necessarily the kiss of death for the plant to keep it in the coconut. It all just depends on the plant how you're able to grow it and how you want to grow the plant. And I'm glad to finally have this repotted because now I will be able to see some growth on it. It's such a beautiful plant. It would be nice for it to get some height and some bulk to it. Instead, it's just been hanging out, doing a whole lot of nothing. Looking forward to seeing some good growth on this plant. Should be good in this container for a couple of years, I would think. Maybe a year and a half, we will see. And uh, I guess keep everybody updated on how it does in the garden tours, perhaps. Actually, probably not. It'll be in my office. I guarantee you I'm going to forget about this plant once it's up in my office. In regards to the videos, I'll see it every day. I'm not going to forget about the plant, but you know what I mean. Guys, comment down below. What are your thoughts, opinions on the subject matter? Anything you have to offer is helpful. This is a community. Having those discussions down below can be really helpful. I can't remember everything. And this is just a discussion. I didn't bullet point any of this. I just went ahead and was like, well, it's time to repot this. Let's talk about it. For me, it all just comes down to practicality, how you want to grow your plants and how you're able to grow them. This looks good. I like that pot. I need to go. Almost out of battery here. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, beautiful day, and everything's just going wonderfully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye.